Ooh, welcome to Magic Gathering Strat. It's me, Brennan, your lovable host. Along with me, as always, is my one co-host for the evening, Sam, the Vault Boy Hunter. Say hello, Sam. Hello, everybody. Well, folks, we warned you. But, um, this week... Episode 67. Sorry. But change has got to happen. So let's talk about that. What's going to happen? Well, viewership and listenership is way, way down. That is not encouraging. Getting together three people from across the world. Really, that's only Dan. Together to do something. We love doing it. We love talking about stuff. But sometimes it gets a little redundant so what we're gonna do we're gonna change the chat topic probably every week talk about something different talk about whatever we feel like mostly it'll be magic hell sometimes it might not be oh yeah and we're really not gonna I'm not gonna censor myself anymore <laughs> that also gets old so if you don't like hearing wordy dirds then i would say a fond farewell it's been fun um but i'm not gonna hold back i'm not gonna like go talking dirty but you know if something comes up i'll say shit i don't care look i just said it boom roasted anyway I just want to let people know things have changed to keep myself motivated and the rest of the team we had to change things up you don't know how it is sometimes when you get together it gets a little stale a little stale in the recording room and i mean we love spice standard, it up <laughs> we love standard popper but as soon as they removed the filter it kind of took a lot of the I mean, it took the, away the ability to get a random game, basically. Yep. And that really did hurt the format quite a bit. So we kind of always run with a small amount of source material to cover, basically. Yeah. Uh, and this will just give us even more freedom to kind of just enjoy. Exactly. More. I'll I'll explain it this way. Before the filter was gone, we were getting about 300 views on the video and about 200 downloads on the podcast. We're lucky to get 100 combined now. Yeah, unfortunately. Like last week's video, or the last video we did, because we missed last week because I had to work, um, got like 37 views. And that's just not enough for us to keep, <laughs> unfortunately. I don't know. We, our fans, we love you. We do. But, again, like everything in life, it's all about incentives, or lack thereof. Yeah, and I mean, I'll keep an eye on Standard Popper on the pre's, and if I see something crazy happen, then we'll definitely talk about it. But right. And you'll still see tweets from us in yeah. regards to Standard Popper. <clears throat> I do Here's recommend something. Gwyneth's yeah. blog. What's that? Uh, we don't want to be beholden on a format anymore, basically. Right. Again, we love you guys, but just gotta move on. Happens. And I think, um, oh yeah, um, Anima Rotoas will be putting out videos. I will put a link in the show notes to standard popper videos. That's right. Fresh, hot from the oven. Anima Rotoas making some videos for you. So that'll be cool. What are we going to talk about this week? <clears throat> well, well, well. We're going to talk about the old Popper Cube. We just had a set release. Not really going to do a set review. Um, Gwynedd does a bang up job on that. So if you want a standard Popper set review, check his stuff out. It's always good. Yeah, and it's funny. It is. He's 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 a a, a clever fella. Yeah. So um, he always brings the comedy in, um, and I like that quite a bit. So um, if you don't follow Gwen on Twitter, you should. Yes. 
um, because he does not a he doesn't flood your feed, so don't worry about that. <laughs> um, and he pretty much only posts up when he is releasing a new article onto his writer adapt blog. Mm -hmm. um, so I totally recommend it. So. I do too. And he also writes about other games as well every now and then. It's pretty yeah. cool. It's good. Go out there and subscribe to it. You can actually, since it's a WordPress site or a blog, is it Blogspot? It's Blogspot. Yeah, it's Blogspot. You can subscribe to it. So every time he updates, it emails you and he Twitters it out. So both ways work. So go to the tweeters. Tweeters. All right. So Popper Cube. Both Sam and I are the owners and um proprietors i don't know if proprietor is the right word word but we'll go with it okay yeah i can't think of a good word cultivator user i user. signed the end user agreement <laughs> the end user. okay well there you go all right well then um sam we sam and i both have some cards we want to talk about um sam so I, I, I think um, Ghostly Flicker, I think it really needed a functional reprint. Uh, <laughs> and I mean, blue, I mean, historically, blue has been the worst color in Magic, let's be honest. Right. It, if um, any color needed help. Blue is definitely it. Right. Um, and if we were covering Standard Popper, I would say that this card is going to be a pain in the ass. Uh, and her popper. Yep. Um, but I think it's going to go into the cube. I know the Stryberski cube runs Ghostly Flicker. Right. It just feels stronger than uh, a lot of the other kind of marginal effects that the cube runs. Um, so to have a second second flicker effect in there, I think it's going to definitely be awesome. Yeah, I agree. Um, I am ordering a foil of it ASAP. I will probably get a foil of it from the store. Yeah. Because I control the foils. <laughs> well, then, hell, I need to send you my list. Um, well, the thing is, is over the weekend when I wasn't working, yeah, one of the guys sold my bulk rare box and my bulk foil box for $800. So I have no bulk of either of those items anymore. What? Why? He... I mean, we're a retail business, and somebody came in and was <sighs> like, I want a bunch of stuff from your cases, and I want your all of your junk rares and all of your junk foils. That's because he's going to then turn around and sell all of them to... Oh, yeah, I have no doubt. Channel Fireball. Or something like that. So. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Business uh, got to do what business got to do. I think that could go in over Rushing River or Withdrawal pretty easily. Hmm. <laughs> Because I just think it's a much stronger card. So. Than Rushing River? I, I mean, I've never been a big fan of Rushing River. Ooh, let's, let's, look, let's compare. I like this. Hold on. Rushing River. Rushing River. Yeah. Oh, I have this in Gold Border. Don't make me get rid of my Gold yes. Borders. Yo. Here, hold on. Throw it up here. Rushing River. Tuna Blue. Instant Kicker. Sacrifice of Land. Uh, return on land permit to its owner's hand. If it was kicked, return another. Mm, yeah. And then withdraw is return target creature to its owner's hand, then return another creature unless its owner pays one. Withdraw? Hold on. Yeah, withdraw. It's from uh, Prophecy. Oh, okay. It's blue, blue. And that, I think, is pretty marginal as well. So. Right. I think Flicker feeds the cube so well. Um, it's definitely it takes advantage of a lot of the good. Yeah, I see. I see what you mean. Seven creatures. Yeah, especially. I mean, we allow multiple counter spells. Yeah. So why not multiple Flicker effects? Especially in a color that. Oh yeah, dude! You could go because also the other ones in there, the white, the white one, um, and then it flashes back for blue. Um, Otherworldly Journey? No, the other one. Um, god dang it. Yeah, it's I know. On my tongue. Um, 
bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Here, let me just pull up. Bouncy like, McBouncekins and I the bouncers. Right here. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Ooh, I need, uh, I need to drink, drink some wine. I went out walking. I me, me and Colin went out to catch the Pokemans this evening. Hold on, I'll, I'll find it. No, I'm looking. Um, Otherworldly Journey. Oh, wait, that's right. It's in the gold section. It's the gold section. Got yeah, it there. it's Alley Multicolor. Yep, yep. I forgot. Yeah. It's got the blue flashback on it. Gotta flash it back. A uh, momentary blink. Momentary blink. Yeah. Look at that. See, so if you had this in there, so you're looking for ghostly flicker, displace, momentary blink, dude, you could have yourself a nice um, Azorius flicker. Yeah, and other worldly journeys in there too. Yep, that's true. So that's I think all of that. It just feeds a theme, and it's, yeah, I like it. I see what you're saying. Cute. Yeah, this you. cute is strong on that particular theme. So, hmm, is it worth? Hold on, I'm gonna pull up the cube because I know one of the colors is actually missing a number. Hold on, blop blop blop. Cube Tutor, Cube Tutor, the finest of all cube websites, and all the tutor websites. Yes. Yeah, don't. Ne I mean, Kaplan's pretty good, but when it comes to Cube, they're not great at all. No, you can't learn. You can't learn shit about Cube at Kaplan. No, I mean, get a degree, maybe. They do have advanced Cube study. <laughs> it's every afternoon after introduction to ladders. Ladders. <laughs> at the community. Community, go. yes. And the grifting one hundred and one. Grifting one hundred and one. Yeah. Uh, Ah, uh, yes. Ice cream. Ice cream was a class you could take. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, white has 56. That's what I'm thinking. So white has one more. The others have 55, which tells me that we could add one to each color and make it even. Yeah, that would make it a 410 cube instead of a 406 like it is now. Yep. I don't understand why it's 406. Um, because he took out all the signets and didn't really replace them with anything. Oh, and this, it doesn't seem like he needs it. But this doesn't have the kind of gold um, selection that well, would make I, it feel like it needed. I, I, mean, <clears throat> I was saying, honestly, I, I, what's that? Quite honestly, I would just draft signets above anything else and just play fire, five color gold good stuff. Right. Yeah, so... Yeah, I left the signets in mine. Did I, you? I haven't taken them out yet, yeah. I'm, I mean, I have them labeled easily enough, basically as my additions. Um, I have those, and let me... Uh, blah, 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 boop. I got my additions. Got a filter. Bye, tag. What is it? Oh, yeah, my addition. And then filter. See how easy it is to filter? Boom, filtered. Here, I'll show I you. I can't see, actually. Like oh, that. there it is. Okay. See, I have my addition here. Because I got Signet, Signet, oh yeah, and all the golems. The, uh... Yeah, I I only really like Spire, and I don't think Blue needs it. Yeah, and that's why I left these in, because I didn't... I don't know. I just wanted them. I like them. I think them. Tangle fits what Green does pretty well. Yep. But now we need to make, I was thinking, I'll get to that in a minute, but some new cards have come out that made me rethink this. Oh, wow. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 Oh, wait, no, sorry. No, nope, wrong, wrong song. Don't, don't, keep Copyright. only sing two bars. Sorry, NFL. Fair use. Fair use. <laughs> Fair use, yes. Our shitty rendition can be used at any point. I'll sing whatever if y'all want to use it in your own podcast. Just send me send me a link or something. Send me something saying, oh, could you sing this song? And maybe in the next show I'll sing it, and then you can use that anywhere in your podcast. Yes. 
will be a facilitator of copyright infringement. No way. I'm doing my. I'll do my own version. Yeah, it'll your be, acapella version. Yeah, it'll be slightly, um, slightly different. He he sings exactly like Jack Johnson, so oh, you know oh, for a good time. Right. <laughs> yeah, Jack Johnson. Laws. Okay. Um, so anyway, let's move on to your next card. Ugh, it's gross. It looks it's a rest. It's kind disgusting. Of. Awesome. Okay, so it's three mana, choking restraints. Two and a white. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature cannot attack or block. Three and white white. Sacrifice choking restraints. Exile enchanted creature. I mean, so. I think that's a tight little package. It shuts down a, an early threat if you're a more defensive deck. Right. And then when you hit five mana, it kills the threat. And I think that's pretty good. Um, people have been complaining pretty much nonstop about the gross art in the set. <laughs> yes, they have. I'm like, shut up. No, I mean, to me, face to face in the shop. Really? Yeah, I'm like, come on. Don't be such a wuss. What, what are you complaining about? All the art's amazing. They're like, oh, we just don't want to see stuff like that on magic cards. I'm like, grow a set. <laughs> so, uh, oh, wait, hold whatever. on. I, I, I like it. Um, I always like pacifism effects with upside. So. Yeah, I gotcha. It does two things, which is always good. Unless those two things are bad. Nope, in these in this case, every everything it does is good. Oh I know. Exiling's good. Yeah. And um, you don't exile the restraints, so it combos with like Oromancer or Oromancer's Oromancer's big brother, Ironclad Slayer from the yeah. set. <laughs> hey, you know who they had an opportunity to bring back for art and didn't? Who? Anson Maddox. Oh. Dude. Do you see his art? His art is gross. Yeah, it's gross, but like, I don't know if he could do the type of art that they would want him to do now. Oh, I see what you mean. Like, the closest thing I think I ever saw to him actually doing art that looks like something is the original art for Senior Vampire. Right, but I mean, like, Black Mana Battery, Bloodlust, those, yeah, those Blood are Lust awesome. Yeah, Bloodlust good. Well, their loss. Yep. Cyclopean Tomb. Another beautiful one. Stupid wizards. Okay. I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, we don't have to go too far on to Choking Restraints. I've said everything I want to say about it. Alright. He's having tentacle love. He is. And then Richard Griff. I love this card. It's not quite Maul Drifter, but... Mall Drifter is never going to happen again. Yeah, this is pretty good, though. No, I think this is going to see classic popper play. Yeah, I agree. And I know I'm definitely going to play it in um, Cube. Mm -hmm. I mean, at 7 mana, of course, it's kind of dumb, but I mean, now that, yeah, um, and unfortunately, I don't understand. The Cube doesn't run, it runs one undying creature. Butcher Ghoul? Yeah, that's it. It doesn't run Stormbound Geist? I don't understand that. As a matter of fact, let's see. I, I want to say Stormbound Geist was taken out for something specific. Let's go to the change log. Doo, 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 doo. I just feel like Stormbound Geist has to be stronger than like Cadaverous Death Parrot. Well, that's because, well, the, the Parrot as a as I have told other people. It's I know the it only 2-2 two, two flyer for two. Yeah. Only one. But that doesn't seem as impressive as a 2-2 two, two flying for three with Undying that comes back as a 3-3 three, three when it dies. That's a nightmare. <laughs> right. And then when you add Wretched Grip to the mix, you get monstrous advantage. Yeah. Okay. Stormbound Geist was replaced by Nimbus Nyad. What was Nimbus Nyad replaced with? Hold on. I will okay. tell you. 
It was cut in the Modern Masters Magic Origins. Just straight would, up cut, not replaced. Uh, not replaced. Yeah. Okay, so I think I'm going to put Stormbound Geist in. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a I, strong ad. I just don't think that Blue's that concerned about having a creature on two that often. Um, so that's the, that's the switcheroo that I'll make there. Geist over Death Parrot. So I don't have to worry about trying to find a copy of Death Parrot either. Yeah, and it would be easier to find a foil Stormbound than it would to find a foil Death Parrot, trust me. I've looked. Um, yeah, because I'm sure there's like four foil Death Parrots out there. Yeah, um, not many. Is that Those sets didn't really sell for as much nostalgia as people have for them. They didn't really sell. Yeah, I, see, I still don't. I still don't understand those sets. I don't get it either. The funny stuff in Magic is some of my least favorite stuff in Magic. Yeah. Like, if if Magic was Garbage Pell Kids, you know what I mean? Not the same thing, but if it was always Garbage Pell Kids, and it was always that goofy shit, then I, I would get it. You know what I mean? Like, oh. I would have got into it. Okay. Oh, I'm just saying, it would be... If it was always like that, it would make yeah. sense. But these one-offs that are kind of funny, but not really. So it's a little bit funny. I don't know. I mean, yeah. the next little bit funny set we're going to have will be Conspiracy <clears throat> 2. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. You know what? I'm going to make some notes. Hold on. Okay. I like, I like what we're talking about here. Notepad, notepad, spinning around. So you're thinking, you're thinking Geist, Stormbound. Over the Death Parrot. Bound over the Death Parrot. What do you think about this wretched Griff? Because I have oh. my idea. I mean, I like I like the Griff. I think I know what your idea is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I mean, I definitely want the Griff in there. What I'll cut, though, I'm not sure. Um, Griff Vanguard's in there, and that that might be a good enough cut. See, you know what? I asked Dvorsky about that, and he sent me. Oh yeah, the one of these things is not like another. Yeah. Little gift thing. Yeah, but I don't know if I 100% agree with that, because it's one mana difference. And the Griff, one. this fits into more decks. Yep. It's actually more draftable overall. Like, you don't have to be base blue, you just have to... Like, the green ramp deck would probably like it quite a bit. It's possible. Well, I'm going to put that note down because I kind of like your idea about that over the Death Parrot because that Undying is super strong. I mean, it's super strong overall. It can not it can only block flyers, but I mean... I'm not worried about that. I'm yeah. attacking. I'm not blocking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's my thing. All right, well, you liked it, and so did I. I want to talk about it, too. Um... These this series of colorless um, emerge cards, I think they're super, super cool, super flavorful. Uh, it's like the thing in um, the movie, the thing. <laughs> I don't know if I can get any more clear than that. I I mean I've recently watched all of the John Carpenter movies again. Oh, you did? Oh, I love oh, John. That's Carpenter. awesome. That's One awesome. One of my favorite directors. Oh, John Carpenter's great. Um, but yeah, the thing this is this is reminds me of that so much. The only problem is that they only made two of them at Common, which and I mean I like seriously? the other one. I think the other one's quite good too. It of the Horrid Swarm. Oh, yeah, I want that. I will talk about them both at the same time. I should have put a picture yeah. of it, but. Um, Okay, the Wretched Vangriff 
Our wretched griff, like you see here, emerge five and a blue, which means you sacrifice something. You can pay less for it. And when you cast it, you draw a card. Not when it resolves. When you cast it. And since emerge is a cast uh, replacement cost, um, you cast it. So there you go. And I agree, I like this in there. And I have all of the golems in my cube. I, I left them in there. I know Staborski took them out. But I left them in. Uh, actually, I don't think he ever had the dross, or some of them. But um, I was kind of chatting with him. He doesn't like this over um, the, uh, what's the golem, the blue one? What am I thinking of? Spire. Spire Golem. And he says Spire Golem's stronger, but he doesn't like this. He thinks, but he still doesn't put Spire Golem in the deck. Um, I'm like you. I think this fits. This has more versatility because even if you don't cast it for a merge, you could still cast it if you needed to. It is possible. And so. he, imagine the green ramp deck if somebody's just in that by themselves mm -hmm. and get to seven mana turn three or it'd be more like turn five but then they drop a retrograph into play draw an extra card have a three four flying in play i mean it incentivizes people to take off color stuff like that right um, of course i wouldn't run it in a cube when you have the signets that makes things easier to do you know, to splash around like that. Right. So something to be careful about, but... Yeah, I think I... Hmm, it may cause me to take the signets out and add these in, because I was wondering, with things like this and the past set, um, is there room to add colorless as your fifth color? Or six color, excuse me. So right now, if you look at our if you look at both of our lists, um, here I'll bring it up so everybody can see it. So here it is. Um, mine has four thirty, just due to my additions and whatnot. But they have colorless already. But that's almost entirely, you know, equipment and ramp. And a few creatures. There's a few creatures. 15 creatures. Uh, yeah, mine, mine has 24. How many does yours have? Uh, 14 creatures. 14, so I added 10. Um, so anyway, I was and wondering if you could... Especially I mean, take out... Me, I'm probably going to take out the two golems that fit these colors. But then you also have um, things like, where is the green one? Do, 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 do. Where are you, green? Is it in here? Or is it colorless? The, um, no, dang it, dang it. The green um, Phyrexian, is that in here? The Thundering Pteranodon? Yeah. Pteranodon, it's in there. It's in my version, at least. Right. I could have sworn... Let's see, Control-F. Thundering... Oops. Wrong side. Control-F. Thundering... Yep, yeah, it's in colorless. So you already have that green colorless. I mean there's two conspiracy wacky draft cards in it. Yep. And I don't particularly want to run any of those. I hear you. And there's also like um, Dirty yeah. and Automaton and Clay Statue. Yeah, Clay Statue's been in there forever. I think I added the Ocean Soldier. I don't remember. The statue looks like a pile. <laughs> I know it's like old school and everything. 
Uh, it's antiquities, yo. But that doesn't mean that it's necessarily good. Plus, the only way to get a blackboard or you know, a blackboarded one would be to get the antiquities one. Or f uh, foreign blackboarded fourth edition. Oh well, yeah. Then that's an easy cut. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of things in here. I mean, like I said, I've added my own. No, I think he has the Ocean Soldier. Hold on, let me look. Let me go back over here. Control F, Ocean Soldier. Yep, it's still in there. I mean, it's in his. Uh, it's on the one that you sent me. Right. And that yeah. doesn't, you know, it's necessarily good or bad. It's just like older creatures like that like pre-modern creatures there's not a ton in here and they really stick out like a sore thumb for the most part yeah i agree clay statue i think it's gotten a little too long on the tooth and i mean it's never been necessarily that good of a card like in its history that and yoshin soldier even though yoshin soldier is marginally you know a little bit better Oh yeah, Yoshin Soldier, I believe, was in the winner of the 1996 World Champ. Yeah, he played the Yoshin Soldier, then he dropped a Bone Splitter, equipped it. <laughs> Everybody was like, what's equipment? <laughs> right. I don't know what equipment is. Judge. Yeah. That was pre-judges, I'm sorry. Oh no, he, he dropped, what was it, what's the dark? There's a sword in the dark that was like the first equipment. Damn it. I have no idea, but it sounds delightful. Yeah, hold on. I think it's rune something. Um, rune. Eh, let me search for it. Rune okay. Channel Spike. No. <laughs> God, could you imagine that back in the day? That would have just run roughshod over everything. Okay, here we go. Let's do type artifact. Uh, expansion. The dark. And since there aren't that many, I'm just going to hit search. I'm telling you. 647 cards. What? No. Here it is. Rune sword. Three and tap. Target attacking creature gets plus two plus zero oh until end of turn. When that creature leaves the battlefield this turn, sacrifice rune sword. If the creature deals damage to a creature this turn, the creature dealt damage <gasps> can't be regenerated this turn. If a creature dealt damage by the targeted creature would die this turn, exile it instead. Holy Jesus. S sweet mother of God. <laughs> that's that's just too much writing. It is, but it's an equipment. I mean, kind of. In the. Yeah. So, I'm gonna cut Clay Statue for Retro to Griff. You like Clay Statue? No, I'm gonna cut Clay I mean, Statue. Oh, sorry. Over. Retro to Griff. Clay Statue. I'm, I'm, I like these notes. And I'm gonna put in It of the Horrid Swarm over Guardian Automaton. Over yes. Guardian Automaton. Because it's not, I mean, that's a really crappy. Oh, uh, one thing. You're from. No, I, 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 I feel you on that. And the main reason is whenever I draft this cube, I'm not drafting with experienced drafters. Th these are, these are simple folk. <laughs> off of the earth yeah no basically they're like tempest and before oh, okay so i don't know how all this crap works they they have like hundreds of thousands of cards all roughly tempest and before and i'm not kidding it is that many it is stacks and boxes and everything so anyway so I, I like I like to keep things simple and I and I can understand that that guardian atom not the guardian automaton I'm thinking um, lurking automaton what's the one what was is it guardian that is the one you you pick if you drafted it 
No, that's that's from Origins. It's a three three for four, and then if it dies, you gain three life. Hmm. And none of the artifact creatures in here are particularly strong, but holy crap, that's horrible. That's right. so bad. What's the, what's the one that's lurking automaton? Lurking. Yeah. yeah, that's one of the wacky draft cards. That and Cogwork Librarian. Yeah, see, I would think I would cut Lurking before I cut Guardian. Not to say Guardian's good, but Lurking to me is more difficult to understand, especially for someone who's either a new player or... You know what I mean? I mean, the thing about it is, is like, we could probably find two non-wacky draft artifact creatures to slot into those slots without a problem. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Adam wanted the wacky draft aspect, um, which I can appreciate. Like, if he's drafting with players that are more experienced about magic and all of that type of stuff. Yeah. But at the same time, like, I'm not a big fan of that type of card and so like just finding a couple of, of effective like mirror sire or something like that or anything from the scars of mirrodin block because those they had a lot of push artifact creatures right would probably slot into those two slots um what it would be i'm not necessarily sure um but it has to it just has to be close to the curve mm-hmm um, and it will never replicate that oddball effect, of course. Like, right. this is going to happen. Which is fine, because we don't want all the ball effects for the most part. I don't want them at all, so. I gotcha. But yeah, I agree. It of the Horrid Swarm needs a... Uh, it, it needs something here, because you get two... It's a 4-4. Four, four. For eight, which sucks, but you get two insects, a one one. Now you're thinking, well, that's just six power for eight. Blah, who cares? But the emerge cost is what you're looking at, son. Emerge. Emerge. It's six and a green. And if you when you sacrifice something to it, seriously, it's awesome. And you also get those two insects just for casting. So if someone counters you. Say, uh-uh, son, I get these insects. Boom, boom. Suck it. Boom, boom. So that's cool. All right. Well, it of the horde. It deserves a spot. All right. Let's go on. Here's something. Um, I was reading a popper review, and I saw the Spectral Reserves. Three and a white. Sorcery. Sorcery? That sucks. Why are we talking about sorcerers? I don't know, because I want to. Put two 1-1 one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield. You gain two life. So, for four mana, you get two 1-1 one, one flyers and a marginal upswing. So, um, currently, the cube does not have sins enlistment. Yeah, I thought that was odd. I did too. Uh, let me look for the change log and see what it was replaced by. I think it was replaced it by... Run, it runs Una's Grace. Yeah, it runs Una's, and I think it was... I think the birds um, Battle Screech replaced it. Okay. Nope, it didn't. It was never in. No Sins oh, Enlistment. Wow. So, it doesn't have Sins Enlistment, which costs the same, but you get two... Um, soldier tokens, and you can retrace it. Um, hmm. It's an instant, right? Uh, I'm not, oh, I don't know. Here, I'll look it up. Yeah, you look it up. I have MTG Familiar, which is a wonderful app. Oh, yeah. Sends tactics, sends enlistment. Oh, it's a sorcery. So they're both sorceries. Let me pull I mean, the retrace, I think, just pushes it over the top, though. 
Yeah. Because in, in the late game, it's always going to be way better than the spectral, even though the flying spirit tokens. Yeah, that's true, because you can keep doing it. Now, what about the other one? Did I put that in this list? The... Let's pull it up. It is two mana. Hold on. Okay, let's go back. I'm going to go Eldritch Moon. Advanced Search. And we're going to do White. I believe the CMC cost is one. Add Search. What is this homeboy? Here it is. Thraben Standard Bearer. Okay. A single white mana. Human Soldier. 1-1. One, one. For one and a white. Tap. Discard a card. Much like reach, excuse me, a Retrace. Put a 1-1 one, one Human Soldier token on the battlefield. Now. <clears throat> this seems a little closer. As an easier to cast late game token generator yeah it dies to virtually any removal on the cube though yes that's true i mean it dies to the wimpiest removal and an unmorbided tragic slip yeah and tragic slip being one of the few morbid cards in the cube yeah there's the zombie lady Oh yeah, the new one just got shifted down. Yeah. Actually, it was shifted down before. Was it? Yeah, in Conspiracy. Oh. Zombie Lady is good. She is pretty good. Get that zombie. Okay. So anyway, I was just wondering about this. Um way easier to find a foil of it if you're into that than the Battle Screech. I don't even think Battle Screech has a foil. Um, it does online. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Yeah. Play. I don't think it does in play because it's Judgment. I don't think Judgment had foils. Anyway, okay. I just wanted to see what you thought about that. Interesting. Oh no, it has a foil. It does. Battle, Battle does, Screech yeah, does. Um, oh my goodness. It's ten bucks right now. Oh god. No thanks. This is a popper cube for a reason. <laughs> I don't want to spend the, a billion that's dollars. That's almost like on it. the amount of money you'd have to spend to buy the Maze of Ith at this point. Right. And Which I, I got my maze. Yeah, I got I got an old school Maze of Ith. I got an Eternal Masters one. That's cool. Yeah, I like it. I do too. Alright, Desperate Sentry. Two and a white. Human Soldier. When it dies, put a 3-2 colorless Eldrazi horror creature token onto the battlefield. But if you have Delirium, you get 3-0, meaning it can be a 4-2. Okay, when I see this, I think of this as the White Penumbra Spider for three mana. <clears throat> the problem with that is that Penumbra Spider, of course, is just a billion times better, right? Oh, it's a 2-4 with Reach. Yeah, for four. And yeah. if this guy had better stats or maybe even cost one less, I think he'd be awesome. <coughs> But as a 1-2 for 3, I just don't think it's quite good enough. Yeah, I love the idea of the Eldrazi horror tokens. But unless we're going to do a significant push towards Popper Reanimator, I don't know. I was on the fence about this one. I love the token, but... I think maybe getting if delirium was consistently easy to get, 
then I think it would be worth it because you're throwing down a 4-2 pretty regularly. But I, I don't know. If to, I just feel like you'd have to invest a lot of the cube into delirium enablers. Yeah. I don't think that's worth it. Like, nah. It would really warp the for the makeup of the cube. <laughs> you would you would have to push it, and then you'd have to take out some other um, push Better. mechanic. Yeah. And I mean that's it's the same way with like heroic. Right. Right. You have to set the whole cube up to push that. And often, what you're pushing isn't as good as what you're taking out. <laughs> yeah. And There's a that... reason you took it out in the first place. Yeah. All right. Makes sense. Now we have this guy. Who got added to Aristocrats, which uh, I'm pretty happy with. He's awesome. I think this is great. And there is, there is sacrifice in there. In the cube. Already. But adding this and adding um, it of the Horrid Swarm does put two green creatures in. So this would have to replace something. And I don't know what it would replace. Out of green? Out of a creature? Yeah. Here, give me a sec. I'll just look over the green and see what's kind of dinky. What's the Path Warden? Path Warden? It's got a, like a small, it's a Tujura Path Warden. Tujura? Um, Control F. Yeah. Path oh. Warden. He's just a 5-4 with Vigilance and Trample for 5. He's not... He's just completely vanilla, basically. Well, the Vigilance and Trample is pretty good. Yeah, Let's it see. is. Maybe he would stay. Uh, what I what do I just not care for here? Let's see. Byway Courier. Um, he is a kind of equivalent of... Um, Elvish Visionary, which this cube doesn't even run. Nope. Was just recently taken out, as a matter of fact. Does Imperious War do you wanna... I don't understand why Basking Root Wall is in here. Because it doesn't really... The cube itself doesn't enable madness very Oh, easily. right. That's true. I didn't even think about that. I don't think there's hardly any madness at all. Or discard. Mm. It feels kind of dinky as a 1-1 one, one for 1. Um, let's see. I want to try to cut something of equal or lesser, or equal <laughs> or greater mana cost, though. Because yep. you don't want to throw the curve of the cube too far out of whack and you don't want to cut anything too high end because that leaves green with only ramp and nothing to ramp into right I would probably do something this simple like Greg's companion but I don't know trample's so good right his green is pretty tight actually yeah I know they're all pretty good. Yeah. Let me look he's not here. playing anything too, like, creature-wise, he's not playing anything crappy. Yep. Oh, and also, I am going to get the new Prey Upon art. Because that is sick. Where it has the two, um, uh, the werewolf versus jacked-up werewolf. Oh, wow. That is really nice. Yeah. Isn't that cool? That is awesome. I think it is wonderful. Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> Elephant ambush. Yeah. Well, I mean... 
That could be a... Uh... No, it can't be, because Elephant Ambush is actually fairly decent early and late. And again, you need to leave, like, high-end costed stuff for... For ramp to do something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean... Two or three oh. elephant tokens for ten mana doesn't sound great, but <laughs> green just sits there twiddling its thumbs without stuff like that to do. Right. I'm not a big fan of wild size. Oh, I see. There's wild mongrel and basking root walla. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. There it is. A little mini combo, I guess. Yeah. I think there's a couple other things you can pitch to. It could just be as simple as cutting rocks maulers. Rocks maulers. I mean, everybody likes bebop and rock steady, but yep. more than meets the eye. Let's face it; it's probably not as strong of a card if your cube set up for the sacrifice aspect. Right. And I feel like this cube probably could get there. No. <laughs> fall over everybody what's that I fell over Brennan just fell over uh oh can you hear me yeah can you hear me yeah uh, skype just said no microphone detected uh, i mean i can hear you yeah i see my self on the monitor so I don't know. Okay. whatever skype shut up i don't want to talk to you anymore yes yeah, skype big hoser Okay. okay. So right. I really need to look into. Really, my my main thing here is I really want to see how these cards are going to play in limited. And after this weekend, I'll have a better taste for that. But oh yeah. He'll be uh, he'll be living it up. Yeah. With the I'll midnight be... pre-release. And then the eleven thirty Sunday pre-release. And then. The drinking, the heavy, heavy drinking. <laughs> to cope with all the pre-releasing you just yeah. had to witness. We're doing a funeral for Avison at the midnight pre-release as a theme. So, that'll be fun. Yep. I'll take some pictures. Cool. For next week's show. Well, actually it'll be the week after. Oh, okay, the week after. Um, trying to look over anything else off of the spoiler real quick just to see if we can jam out another card. Borrowed Grace looks good. That's the um, Fortify. Yeah, with... you can either do Fortify, yeah. like Fortify or Fortabut. Yeah, um, for 5 and you can do both because it's got the Escalate Claws on it. I like uh, Escalate. Don Griff looks crappy. Um... Fiend Binder is pretty cool. It's a 3-2 for uh, 3 and a white. Then when it attacks, it, you tap a target creature defending player controls. I think... Um, what was that? There's a, there's one already in there that's white. That does something similar? Yeah, it's... Gosh, what's it called? Like, Is it gold, gold Metal Harrier? Gold Metal Harrier? Hold on. I think it could be. Hmm. No, that's just white and tap, tap target oh, creature. Oh, okay. And then Gideon's Lawkeeper is white and tap and tap target creature. I have to find both of those stupid cards. I want to say something like, oh, poop, I can't remember. I don't see it, though. Coalition, Guardian, Seraph. I'm looking forward to playing with the Squire. <laughs> he looks super good. Yep. So, I mean, that I think could possibly be something to think about, because it's definitely a, it's flavorful for white right. and it's useful in combat. Right, and I'm telling you, there is a white one already that does that. I don't see him in here, though. Um, like, Battlefield... Dang it! Why can't I not think of that? I, have, I can I can see the picture of it in my head. It's this little dude running out in the middle of the the battle. 
and he uh well now it's gonna kill me hold on oh look at that nope. y'all can hang on yeah while he's looking it up um i'll go ahead and talk about um i think drag under if we want to stay with like a heavy tempo theme mm -hmm. that's the return target creature for two and a blue and you draw a card um I probably like it just too much off of the draw a card aspect. <laughs> I love cantrips. I'm happy to see so many in the set. Um, Ingenious Scab, which is the 2 3 for 2 and a blue with prowess and um, frost breathing, is what I like to call it. The plus right. minus one. That's definitely going to go in, like, without a doubt. That's way too good not to include. Um, let's see. I think that's pretty much it for blue. Oh, did you see they printed another, um, uh, Wing Drake or whatever, the T1 for... Oh, two, yeah, the Spirit. Uh, yeah, the Tattered Haunter. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I did see that. It's been a while since they printed one of those. Right. Um, I think Burrow Manibulance is pretty good. That's the Escalate for one black and two colorless to Escalate. That gives a uh, target creature plus one, plus one, and another, or minus one, minus one. Yep. I like that. Um, Cemetery Recruitment. If there's going to be a card that pushes zombies, that's the one and a black return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand if it's a zombie draw card. Oh, yeah, that's true. I like that a lot in Zombie Tribal. Um, maybe not for the cube, because I don't think there's enough of any one creature type in the cube. <laughs> right. It's definitely not a, a tribal cube. No. I was about to say, it doesn't do a whole lot of tribal support. Which is fine. I mean, you have to really go whole hog, and typically you end up with like the the thematic tribes of each color. So, humans, elves, goblins, and zombies, and out of all of those, I mean, goblins and elves are probably going to be the most powerful. Right. So I can't imagine how um, how those type of cues really play. My my tip for foil and common to get whispers of Emrakul. I think that card is going to be spicy and foil. You think so? Oh yeah, it's awesome. It's random discard, and if you're in a like for constructed, I think it's going to be pretty solid. What was it called again? I'll pull it up. It's the Whispers of Emrakul. Oh, it's, Whispers of Emrakul. Okay. Yeah, the so colorless and black target opponent discards a card at random. If you have Delirium, hmm. they discard two cards at random. It's the fixed him. I gotcha. Oh, I was gonna say. Um, this is a seasoned marshal, but it's really expensive. Whenever a marshal attacks, you may tap target creature. That's a million mana. That is a million mana. But there's also Niblis of the Urn. Check this out. I wasn't thinking about this one, but I just came across it. It's two mana. Uncommon. Ah, uh, for one one? Flying. Mm -hmm. Wow, both of those Niblises are pretty good. Nibli? Nibbly, yeah. Um, I like how Red got one of the few vanilla creatures. Yeah. Two, two, two for two. Hey, been a long time coming, Red. Take that, Red. We hate you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Red. I don't hate you. Um, Otherworldly you, Outburst is interesting. That's the one Red that gives target creature plus one plus zero until end of turn. And if it dies that turn, you get a three, two Eldrazi. Oh, orb. right. And the cool thing is you can put it on other people other people's creatures if they're about to die so I'm that you sure get it that's the best way to do it yeah. um, and then Stentesia Stensia Innkeeper Stensia Innkeeper yeah that's the 3-3 three, three for 3 and a bread um, if it enters when it enters the battlefield trap target land and opponent controls and it doesn't untap during its next untap step that is such a weird red card <laughs> Yes. Um, Thermo Alchemist is the zero three for a 
colorless and a red with defender, and it deals, taps to do all damage, and then if you cast an instant or sorcery, untap it. That's going to be... I think that's classic popper playable immediately. Yeah, because it can be its own storm. Yeah, it's basically... You storm out with that. Um, so that's pretty cool. Green... I think we already talked about the one card that was marginally interesting in green. Besides, like, Prey Upon, of course. Oh, the Prey Upon new art's beautiful. I mean, green just got the shaft. Which is fine, because it was so strong in um, Shadows. Yeah. I do like the um, Woodcutter's Grits. That's the two colorless, one green target creature you control gets 3-3 three, three and Hexproof until end of turn. Yeah, that's good, except in a world that has Vines of Vastwood. Yeah, that's true. Um, we already talked about the two Emerge cards that we get. Is there any double face junk that we get? Full face cards? Oh, um... Those rats. Yeah, those are the meld cards though. Um, the werewolf horror, the red one, I don't think is particularly good. Ubenwald captive, that's the one too for a colorless and a green with defender. And you tap to add a green mana to your mana pool. Oh, uh -huh. Then we transform it. It becomes a 4-6 Eldrazi werewolf that adds two diamonds to your mana pool. Mm -hmm. The problem with it is, and maybe this will be like a standard popper thing, it's seven to transform it. Yeah, that's and crazy. That's a lot. That's a whole lot. Um, the equipment doesn't... I mean, it's crap. Um, uh I do like the new art for Terraron. Terraron? Uh, Terrarian? Terrarian, yeah. I do like that new artwork. It makes a little more sense. Yes, I agree. Uh, I ordered. I already ordered four of them. <laughs> awesome. And, um, of course, the Graph Rats and Midnight Scavengers are auto-includes into every format in every possible way. <laughs> so you can meld them and make super cards. You can make a 5-6 Haste Menace, dude. It's pretty good. And I actually think the rats... The rats are just 2-1 one for 1. They're, or 2-1 one for 2. They're not ex not all that impressive. Scavengers, though, is actually pretty um, decent. Um, at a 3-3 three, three for 4 and a black. And it's got a oh, limited good. Grave Digger grave effect. Digger. Yeah. Right? yeah. So that's pretty good. So, I mean, as far as cube goes, I don't think really... Most of that will make it in. But um, as far as like Popper, um, I definitely see the red dude making an impact on the format. And of course, Liliana, the last hope. Um, she's going to be great in Popper. In Popper, she would be a total blowout. <laughs> I read on my little local Facebook group that um, somebody had a friend who was drunk and he ordered 20 Lilianas from like TCG player and the seller who sold them the cards basically wouldn't let him cancel the order. What? He, ordered, paid, he pre ordered 20 Liliana the last hopes while he was drunk <laughs> instead of the two or whatever he wanted. Yeah. And the seller's like, I'm not going to refund that to you. You know that, right? So Holy crap. Lianas. It's probably, I mean, it's probably going to be like a, what, $40, $50 card. It's not going to be Liliana of the Bell High, but... I don't even think it'd be 40 But I, how much did he pre-order it for? I have no idea. I just laughed and kept going. That is funny, not, though. He's not one of the players that comes into Boom. Yeah. So, because we have four <laughs> shops in town and everybody's loyal to a shop, basically. So, Right. I just don't... I mean, Lily, like... She's not even as good as Nahiri. Mm -hmm. uh, I just feel like she could have been a lot better. Well. Plus, I don't really like the art very much. Yeah, I like her oath though. Yeah, the oath card's pretty cool. Yeah, art's good on that one. 
Yeah, the oath is good. I'll keep watch happy now. Yeah. Best, best fa- flavor text. <laughs> flavor since Werebear. He has the right to bear arms. Ah. All right. Okay, that's it. I think we're done, right? We're done. Anyway, there's the stuff. Patreon.com slash Magic Gathering Strat if you like what we do here. Follow us at Magic Gath Strat. Me at Cerulean says hi. Sam at SPO7697. Or Dan, who wasn't even here, at Dan Horning. So for this week, I am Brennan. I'm Sam. And this has been the Magic Gathering Strat Show.